Hi everybody, Dave Kusek here. I am the founder of the New Artist Model Online Music Business School and uh, very happy to have some friends of mine here today. Uh, we're going to talk about fan engagement and support and raising money for projects. Uh, the number one problem that many, many artists uh, talk to me about is having a steady income. How do I get a steady income? You know, how do I quit my day job? How do I live the life in music that I really want to live? That's the biggest challenge that most people have. And, you know, you look at all the other issues that people have about promoting and marketing and engaging with fans. It, it really all comes down to your relationship with your audience and how can you find support for, for your art. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I've got uh, three friends of mine here, uh, the founders of Pledge Music. Uh, we have Benji Rogers and Jace Varden. And Will Daly, a uh, very, very successful uh, local musician in the Boston area uh, who has a lot of great insight into uh, what's working for his career and, and good, good stories to share with you all. So, I'd like to start off by uh, introducing Benji. And Benji, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thank you for having me. Um, my name's Benji. Um, and along with Jace and a couple of other ruffian friends of mine, we uh, had this idea to found Pledge Music about six years ago. Uh, we just turned five. Um, I really, the intention behind creating the company in the first place was that as an artist myself, uh, you know, performing, playing in bands. Um, even Jace and I were in a band together a uh, uh, hundred years ago in Los Angeles. Um, uh, shocking, shocking material. Um, uh, basically, um, what I saw was is that the industry as was wasn't going to continue in any kind of viable fashion. The selling of CDs would seem strange in a streaming world. And um, so, basically, I called up the smartest, best people I knew and said, I've had this idea. Uh, and I, in my head, was going to be a musician full time still, and you know, uh, create this company. What ended up happening was it was a much bigger, you know, idea than than just the original one. And uh, so yeah, Pledge Music was born and launched the first campaign, which was for my own EP five years ago in July of last month. Um, and uh, it really kind of blossomed from a a place where an artist reaches out to their fans to you know be a part of the making of an album to a community where people are now looking for new people to new artists to get involved with um, it's really kind of like a super fan destination and um, you know we've been honored thrilled and excited to work with you know thousands of unbelievable artists um, it's gone beyond what I think Jace myself and the the two other founders really thought it could be um, but yeah well, that's that's the story. Uh, was a musician, now uh, president of tech company, and uh, who knows? Maybe I'll start making albums again soon. If Jace can, uh, Jace can free up some time to play drums. Well, I hope so. So, Jace, how did you meet this character? Oh, this character and I go back a little ways for sure. Uh, and it's it's rooted in Boston, to tell you the truth. It's um, we met at Berkeley College of Music in 1991. Uh, we were both living in the Com Ave dorms and. Uh, I was playing with, uh, with, with a few guys uh, in one of the rehearsal rooms down there, and Benji popped his head in and, and said, hey, and... Tell um, the story, Jace. You know, uh, <laughs> no, nah, nah, we can leave that for another time. I will say this, that uh, the band that I was playing with uh, went on to sign the largest and last big rock record deal, <laughs> million-dollar advance uh, that was offered in the late 90s. Uh, uh, while I was uh, traipsing around uh, Europe with Benji in L.A., uh, drinking too much whiskey uh, and making music. But anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so 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 we met at Berkeley, and 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 throughout the '90s, we kind of traipsed around a bit and 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 made some great music together. Um, when the band that we had to, together in L.A. kind of took its course, I came back to Boston, uh, put myself through business school. Benji was in New York playing. Um, you know, we've been fast and best friends uh, throughout that whole period anyway. So when he had the idea for Pledge Music, um, I guess I was that only friend that had been through business school that he first kind of brought the idea to. And we sketched the original, you know, business plan out on some uh, napkins at a coffee shop in Waltham. 
uh, brought it to some people who were uh, slightly more experienced and, 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 and incredibly smart and gracious with their time and helping us develop that business plan um, into something that we could then present to um, a few angel investors and, and found one right away and uh, we're up and running really within a year's time from Benji's idea to to actual build and, and launch. So uh, yeah, the roots go back far and, and uh, we've remained friends uh, and now uh, business partners. That's wonderful. Thank you, and we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot more about Pledge and and what you guys have built and and the community that you've created and how it all works. But I'd like to say hi to Will and uh, Will. Why don't you tell us? I understand you got a record dropping today. It comes out today. My first independent record via Pledge Music comes out today. Um, I I don't know. I first heard of Pledge Music, but. Um, I was in the Boston area, and Jace is based, his office is based in the Boston area, so we were running to each other at shows and stuff like that. And I was on Universal at the time, and I could smell not only the direction of the industry, but just that this was not a place that I felt safe making music, which isn't really an insult to them. It just wasn't a good match for me uh, artistically. And... Uh, I was kind of looking to the future at all times and ran into Jace and started talking about Pledge and getting comfortable with the concept. And I think what really what really turned me on to the concept was when I pledged on a couple of friends or bands that I was a fan of. Uh, I remember Grant Lee Phillips, who I've always been a fan of, uh, Jesse D, who's a friend of mine in Boston, and Tim Guerin, who's a friend of mine in Boston. And I pledged on their three campaigns, and I got their records. And just listening to it was a different experience because I had been a part of it from day one. Uh, and you felt like you were another reason why this existed. And it's the first time that's ever been allowed as a listener or a fan or anything. And it's a unique experience. And I think um, it's a new experience that for the general music lover, it's going to take a while for them to get around to. But when they do, it, it'll be this great great norm that we'll all wonder, why wasn't it always this way? And we'll look back kind of like how we used to bleed each other with fevers. <laughs> you know? And we'll look at you know, the large label system or buying a record after it already cost $100,000 to make as some archaic way of making music uh, when we could easily have done it together. Is my microphone on? Yeah. Yes, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but particularly the 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 folks that are bleeding. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so I I I okay, I am so, okay. No, I'm gone. Yeah. So uh, Benji and Jace, uh, let's let's go back to pledge and why don't you guys talk a bit about your experience over the last five years with building this business and. Uh, working with artists, developing a community, uh, and helping people, you know, connect uh, direct to fan, and and building their community. What has been your, you know, what what's been the most surprising and interesting thing that you've seen along the way uh, that maybe you you weren't expecting when you first started? You know, um, hearing Will just describe. What we do from his perspective has been one of the. I mean, that's that's an amazing way that you just put that. And what I'll say is, is that the, uh, it's exactly what we had. What you just described, Will, is exactly what we intended for it to be. Um, I, I think that that you know one of the more surprising aspects to the business for me personally has been that um, it's better for everybody involved. Um, Jace was the first one to point this out to me that in business you've got the sort of the hierarchy of needs which is where you've got like if it can be a win-win for multiple people and you can create a sustainable business out of that there's nothing there's no downside well yeah and you know you guys uh, started very early on uh, on this path you know the the whole crowdfunding thing kind of kicked off when you guys started uh, your business and you chose to focus on on music 
uh, you know, given your background. But I think that that was a, you know, very prescient uh, thing to see at the time where you know, the market was going to change and, and you put yourself right in the, uh, in the hot seat to help uh, facilitate that and help people, you know, with their careers in this, in this new world that we're in. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's 2020 and, and you know, what we've been able to see it's it's just a remarkable phenomenon. The thing that, that consistently amazes me, though, is that um, when you you think about w what pledge is, it's a better experience for all involved. It makes more money, and it sells more records. And what, what's been surprising is you'll have a meeting with a lot of managers or labels, whatever it is. You know, say it makes more money, sells more records. Fans have a better time. A charity often gets paid. Everyone involved has this incredible experience. Let's go, and they go. Mm, yeah, but you know, uh, it's just not how it works. We normally like to, you know, we like to do X, Y, and Z, and and you get that sort of thing of like, well, why would you want to do that? You know, we'll literally just cut to the heart of heart of what we do, which is that it's better. I've often said this to fans. You know, you don't have to um, go through a pledge campaign if you don't want to. You can go and just buy the record at retail when it comes out, or you can buy it on iTunes, and or you can just stream it. That's an option for you, but for an artist to not offer a fan the ability to spend where they want to, the ability to participate, is simply cutting off a potential stream of income, but more importantly, this is their future. The people that pre-ordered Will's record are the future. You know, They are going to be there. They're going to carry it to the next level. Before we started this chat, Jason and I were talking about the record that we, that, that we watched Will make. I mean, you know, we're, we're fans as well, and... Um, had we not done that, had had we not experienced that, what would it have been like? What would our what was the most we could have achieved outside of this realm of possibility? You know, um, and I think it comes down to this fact that I've been surprised that artists tend to be storytellers, creative people who tell stories. The release of an album, you know, straight from you know uh, its finish to the streaming service is not much of a story anymore, but the creation of an album why it was put in. That's the story. People can follow that. And what I say to a lot of artists is, you're a creative person, and you spend all this time crafting something beautiful, and then at the end of it you go, and let's just put it on some 1980s plastic disc technology and shove it out the door. And better is possible now. And I think that, 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 that you know, in my head and my heart, this will become a normal process, as Will so eloquently put it. But, you know, you know, uh, I want artists to make the albums that they want to make. I want to. And produce an incredible engineers, and you can bring in you know, amazing musicians, and you can Benji, we're, paint we're, with the uh, canvas. As you a see, dropout. A lot of dropout on your mic. I'll do my best. Yeah. Uh, let's try. Uh, Jace, you want to Jace? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'll I, I'll sum it up from a <clears throat> from a purely commercial point of view. Today, I went to iTunes and uh, pre-ordered three albums, two of which we pitched for at Pledge Music and didn't get. One, I just like the artist. Um, the maximum I could spend on iTunes for these pre-orders was nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. I would have easily spent four or five hundred dollars on one of the artists. I would have easily spent seventy-five to one hundred and fifty dollars on the other two artists, just because of how much I like them. Um, so I think what what um, uh, what the traditional route does is that it it leaves all of that extra revenue from a super fan like myself on the table. And what Pledge Music brings to the uh, table from a commercial perspective is the ability for fans to purchase and partake in things that they've never been offered before or that they want, as opposed to what they're just force-fed. So, so um, really, um, from a lost revenue perspective, uh, you know, I, I had the exact example of it today. Um, from the artistic side of it, and I think Will um, can really, really sum this up because this is the story that he told me, I'll just tell a little bit of it, is that the process for the artist as the pledges start to come in whether or not it's before the creation begins or when you're actually in the studio as Will was in the studio, um, 
it allows the project to potentially take on a whole new meaning. The artist is reacting and feeling these emotions as people are responding to the pre-order or the or, or the funding project that's gone up. And I think that um, that necessarily has a direct impact on the creative process in an inspirational way, in a way of saying, hey, listen, I'm not doing this on my own. These are people who want to be a part of this. I owe it to them in one sense. I'm 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 going to give them the best experience I possibly can. So, um, you know, I think it could be argued that for the majority of these projects, um, uh, they're probably able to transcend themselves a little bit because of the positive nature that, that this type of support brings into the studio atmosphere. Will, I'll segue that one to you. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember, uh, like Jay said, being in the studio and my campaign was active, it was just getting going, and the pledge was coming in. Sometimes it was someone you knew, sometimes it was someone you didn't know. And but each time, instead of being in that vacuum in the studio, where you're thinking, "Ah, oh, man, I, this sounds really good. I think I'm pretty awesome," or "This is not sounding good, and no one's ever going to hear it." One of those two things is always happening. And um, you see these names come across, and you immediately connect with someone, multiple people that are going to hear this and want to hear it. Has, it hasn't even been made, they don't know what it is, but they want to hear you do your thing. They trust you, they're excited about you as an artist, and they want to hear you do your thing, as opposed to when I was on labels, and I learned many great things uh, during that time, but you're answering to a couple people who want to hear this word pronounced a little clearer, or your vocal louder, or these things that don't make, don't inspire you. Um, and that are really just uh, people making decisions to make decisions when it comes down to it. Uh, I think when you cut an artist loose, that's when you get real art, and that's when you really get something to invest in, and that's when you really give art a chance to explode. And the platform of having a bunch of people saying, giving you a thumbs up on an, e you know, by pledging while I'm recording, while I'm making this art, was the more enlightening musical experiences I've had. That's 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 awesome. Uh, Will a while ago, you made a statement to me that you know I've 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 heard before and I've thought a lot about, but I'd like you to to talk uh, more about it, in that all art exists because of subsidy. And I mean that's a very profound statement to make, and I'd like to get your thoughts on that. Um, talk about that. I think, for, uh, you know, when I think, uh, when I ever see someone's college dorm room or the refrigerator with Starry Night on it by Van Gogh, it has Starry Night on it. It's a magnet now. It's a poster you can buy anywhere. And uh, it's a painting that everyone knows, and everyone knows the brush stroke, and everyone knows the artist, and it's in museums, and it's made museums millions of dollars now. But they would not exist if Vincent Van Gogh's brother didn't bail him out of it. Every road bump in life didn't pay for his hospital bills, didn't pay uh, for his paints, didn't bail him out. We would not have Starry Night were it not for his brother. Uh, we would not have the Sistine Chapel if it wasn't for the Pope. And we lose sight of that sometimes when we enjoy art uh, in hindsight. And it's not taught in the schools. We're taught about the brushstroke. And we're taught about, uh, you know, how great, uh, who's better, John Lennon or... Uh, Paul McCartney, and we're not taught as much about George Martin. And um, so we need to teach that art exists because all of us need it and want it, and it builds cities, and it builds communities, and it builds businesses like Apple. I mean, Apple was a pretty good computer company, and then iTunes came along, and, it, and everyone had to have an iPod. Um, art builds things, and uh, we need artists, need people's help to, to create the product that brings in the commerce, that brings in everything, architecture, painting, music, film. So uh, it's important to remember that uh, we're all responsible for that. Great. So handing it back to, uh, to either Jace or Benji, um, you guys have now I don't know if you can share any sort of numbers or metrics, but you got a lot of artists on the site. You've got a lot of fans engaging. You've, you've built a really 
a very successful business. You've been at it for five years, which is a huge milestone in a lot of uh, startup communities, uh, whether you make it to five years, so congratulations. But, you know, kind of following in, following on of, you know, what, what Will is talking about that, you know, art requires subsidy and you are sitting in the middle of that transaction between artists and their fans and you're encouraging that subsidy and you're providing some very creative ways to facilitate that. Um, can you can you just talk about uh, experiences that you've had with you know other artists or other fans that have made that connection and you know again what has been maybe unexpected uh, result of the the business that you built? Um, sure. Is, is, the, is the audio better now? By the way, is that good? Um, uh, the, the, there have been some amazing milestones. One of the keys to the to the technology for for me was I used to describe it this way that we want to become in one sense the thinnest skin between the artist and fan. Um, the artist needs the ability to say it's my home on this page. Uh, the fan needs the safety of a community. You know, someone who's going to deal with customer service, who's going to deal with credit card inquiries, that that kind of you know the more prosaic side of things. Um, but what's been what's been phenomenal is is that the the a lot of the innovation of what we built for the platform has been as the result of artists saying why can't it do this I wish it could do this can you push it to do this and when we were a much smaller team it was a huge workload for us because a manager would say I want my artist wants to release their album ten songs at a, at a time it's a triple album and we want fans to be able to vote on it and it was like okay, how do we do that? And then you have to kind of start, you know, from scratch and, and figure those things out. But from the word go, um, we really wanted the artists to shine the brightest on the platform and that we were just the kind of the underlying technology. What it ended up really becoming was the community element was really uh, uh, created by the fans. The fans wanted to interact and talk about it. I remember one campaign for a band called The Headstones out of Canada and the, the headstones just their fans were, were I mean you know in the best possible way crazy uh, they the, the, some of the, the comment threads were thousands long and when I went to see the band uh, in in uh, Toronto on their on their opening day uh, they had t-shirts made which said I pledged and none of us at the company knew this so I'm walking down the street towards the club and there's th thousands of people you know um, uh, uh, bold-headed very, very in shape metal guys uh, with I Pledge t-shirts going down, uh, walking down the street. And, uh, you know, so, so really we are in one sense, uh, we're a community obviously, but the way that, you know, an artist like Will and his fans interact is very much between them. We just want to make it as frictionless as possible. And we also want to be a destination at which, you know, people who might like Will's music are going to come find him. Um, and so it's a really varied mix. We've, we've got campaigns going for everyone from Frankie Goes to Hollywood to Weezer, you know, Devo to Madden. It's really quite a, a varied mix. But what they all share in common is fans. They are people who, you know, are obsessed by music and want to be a part of something larger than just the, as Jay pointed out, 9.99 digital download. You know, th there's more to be had. So now that's what that's one of the things that's amazed me is is that it's. Uh, the way in which artists have forced us to innovate the platform, the way it looks was led by artists wanting to see a deeper experience. And, you know, when people show up and view our pages by the millions, it's a pretty surprising thing for us because, you know, we didn't, I, I, I know, for, I can speak personally, I, didn't, I, I knew it was a big idea. I didn't know that we were going to be able to pull it off to the level that we have. So um, I, I still think someone's going to pinch me every now and then. Well, that live music experience that Benji's talking about is where fans traditionally really went to celebrate, and they still go to celebrate their band. It's where they can go and wear a badge of honor and be in a community of like-minded people. Um, and that's where they all share and gather. And that, I mean, that, that's a community. Every show uh, is, is this community of fans who kind of love this, uh, this artist. And what we've tried to do is, in this kind of cold and impersonal atmosphere that is social networking, that is email marketing, that is all these things, we've attempted to try and just 
draw all that community spirit into this one central point that is the artist's pledge page. And I think what's really key to it is that, um, is, is, is that the commitment that each artist who launch a campaign has um, to bringing the fans in through a series of what we call pledger-only updates. And it's, and it's the commitment to, to pushing out the photos, the videos from the studio, the inside look, the places where fans want to be. Um, which is inside the studio or backstage with the band. It's that telling of the story that builds and builds and builds upon the community. Um, so, so each campaign in and of itself is, you know, meant to 